Number one, uh, when we talk about the crisis, I do <coughs> not talk about the past crisis. In my opinion, we are, we, are, we are currently in year four of the crisis and not in year one after the crisis. Uh, many already pretend that the worst is behind, crisis is over, let's go back to business as usual. Uh, I think this is, a, this is a mistake because even though we do see a, a reasonably promising uh, turnaround in, in many countries, in my country now very surprisingly 3.5% growth this year, so that's there's nobody had expected, but we shouldn't forget three and a half plus from a, a basis that is five percent lower than the year before. So uh, we are starting from 95. 95 uh, multiplied by 103.4 still is below 100. So it, it, it's, it's quite clear that if even in, 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 such a, 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 in such circumstances, it will take a while until we really hit the, the pre crisis level. And whether this is, is really uh, sustainable for a number of years remains to be seen. Uh, we do all depend very much still on the emerging markets. We know China in particular, but also India, and Brazil, etc. And uh, we do know that one of the anchor economies that we, that we had in the past, named the USA, is, is, is not producing right now, it's not contributing right now. You know, uh, uh, in fact, it's contributing rather difficult things like uh, quantitative easing to an extent that uh, maybe we go we talk about this in the Q&A session afterwards that I do not consider to be justified and, and useful uh, it will only produce uh, more um, uh, more liquidity uh, that is not being needed because the US companies sit on 2,000 billion dollars of cash and do not put it to work, i.e. invest or, or give it to, to those that seek uh, credits and loans because there is still a lack of confidence and trust. So what will happen is that those 500 billion that the Fed now is injecting into the market will simply end up in, in other markets where there is a, a higher return, uh, i.e. Uh, China or other emerging markets and it will uh, aggravate this, this, the, the existing imbalances that we have between between uh, countries and it will probably not make it easier uh, to ensure a stable uh, reasonably stable ex exchanges between the currencies now now when you talk about the crisis and and uh, of course uh, here we've had many discussions before we even set up the uh, the committee, uh, everybody pointed to the U.S. and said, well, here we are, you know, the crisis is U.S. made and these uh, fellows are responsible for it, uh, etc. Now, this is true but only partly true. It's fact that, it's, it, it, that the crisis did start in America, but when you really look at it, there is more than the greed of the financial institutions that caused the crisis. When you really look at it, you have to accept the fact that it started in the first place, um, or is due in the first place, to the social policy of the U.S. government that wanted everybody, every citizen in America, to be able to live in his own house or apartment. That is a kind of social objectives that they've had and they have they have done uh, many things to make sure this this becomes real and the result of this was and that really caused a chain reaction the result of this was that uh, financial institutions uh, with the support of the government Freddie Mac Fannie Mae etc with the support of government would offer loans and increasingly uh, were increasingly less thorough in their analysis of whether or not somebody actually did qualify the loan. When you go to a bank and you want to have a loan for whatever purpose, uh, they do screen you. They want to know whether you have regular income, or what, what the level of income is, whether you can afford, to what extent you can afford it, etc. Here we, we did see that there was increasing negligence and that was partly due by the fact that the real estate prices kept going up. So the bank said, well, you know, if, if I give him this credit, even if he doesn't make the, in, in, the money that he, he or she ought to make to pay back the, the loan, 
the value of the house will go up, so I have enough uh, security or collateral so I can afford to do this. And in fact, at the very end, it was even that, that, that not the, the potential homeowners did go and ask for a loan, it was almost sales brigades that would run through the, through the country and, and would, would actually, you know, very aggressively uh, approach citizens and say, well, you know, you have what? You have a mortgage on 80% of your house? Take a, on 100, take on 110, because six months from now your house will be worth that. Uh, and take the money and buy it to yourself a new car and a boat and this, etc. This is, the, so we have the, 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 the state or the government following a wrong or ir unrealistic social policy. We have, of course, the financial sector that op saw the opportunity, exploited it rigorously and did not really live up to professional standards at, at the very end. Uh, we had the, uh, of course, we still had uh, to accept the fact, or the financial institution had to accept the fact that if they gave loans and credit up to a certain level, uh, that uh, they would have to stop because they did not have enough equity or capital to justify it, because the amount of <coughs> loans you can give is tied to the amount of capital that you have. So what did they do? They said, I want to get rid of the loans that I have in my books. I repackage them, make them, turn them into so-called structured products, and I securitize them. In other words, I sell them to other investors. And this is how all of a sudden the loans that were very domestic U.S. American mortgages ended up across the globe. And many a bank also in, in many an, an, an investor, private or institutional, bought into these, invested in, into these structured products because on, on, on average, you know, money was cheap also in Europe and the return was, was not uh, too bad. So here we go. What went wrong here? Here went wrong that the so-called credit rating agencies had to, to give a rating because otherwise you cannot uh, sell such a structured product. No investor would do so, but if a insurance company or a bank or a pension fund, etc., wants to invest some cash that he has, if he can invest it in a product that is rated triple A, AAA, he or she thinks, well, this is a good, good deal, nothing wrong with it, I have the, the security stamp, so to speak. To it. So the credit rating agencies attached uh, a, a test ratings that proved to be wrong. And why did they do this? Because partly because, uh, well, one, they probably didn't know better at the moment of, of the rating, but also they accepted conflicts of interest, which they should not have. Why this? Because they, they consulted the issuers. They consulted those that produced the products and said, look, if you change the product slightly, take more of, of these loans in there and a bit less of this, etc., then I will be in a position to give you a triple A as a rating. Okay. So this is how they, how they did it. So we have already now the, the government, we have the banks, we have the credit rating agencies, we have the greedy investors around the globe, also here in Europe, that said, well, you know, it's a good, good investment. And we have the supervisors, because the regulators and supervisors did not really look very closely at these. You, 